Good morning. It's time for your verse and worship song for today. Uh, we're going to continue on here in the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 7, starting in verse uh, 44, and we're going to go through 57. So another pretty long section here. We're going to continue uh, with the testimony of Stephen during his trial in front of council, and then a little bit into the result of the trial here. So here we go, verse 44, Acts 7. Our ancestors had the tent of testimony in the wilderness, as God directed when he spoke to Moses, ordering him to make it according to the pattern he had seen. Our ancestors, in turn, brought it in with Joshua when they disappointed the nations that God drove out before our ancestors. And it was there until the time of David, who found favor with God and asked that he might find a dwelling place for the house of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made with human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hands make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and eyes, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one. And now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that receive the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and, grind, and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. So, kind of left the last couple of verses here in this section um, for another, another time. Uh, but we're seeing, you know, the end of the testimony here, the end of the history, you know, the story of what God has done uh, for the people, you know, and really Stephen just calling these people out, right? The people that have put him on trial that made false accusations, that made up, you know, fake testimony against him to put him on trial. He's finally, you know, got to the point where, look, I've given you everything that the Lord has done, but here's what you have done. Right, and that happens in verse 51 where he says, you stiff-necked people, right? And this is right after, um, right after he quotes from Isaiah. Right? He says, you stiff-necked pe people, uncircumcised heart and ears. You are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Oh, so, you know, he's really throwing them under the rug here. He's like, guys, you are not doing what the scriptures have called you and told you to do. You know, he's even throwing, old, you know, what we consider Old Testament scripture, which would have been the scriptures that, um, you know, the, the, the people that were persecuting him would have followed. You know, he's throwing the back at him and saying, look, this is what Isaiah said. And you, and you didn't even follow. These are scriptures that you look at, that you understand. Uh, so, anyways, he goes on, which of the prophets did your ancestors not prosecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one. And now you have become his betrayers and murderers, right? And that's righteous one there with capital letters, right? Referring to, referring to Jesus, right? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one. So they killed those who foretold of Jesus, who said, you know, the prophet is coming, the Messiah is coming. You know, I wonder there, why... Why would they do that? You know, why would they go back and why would they, uh, why during that time, if somebody was, you know, 
prophesizing that the Messiah is coming, why would you persecute them? Why would you kill them? You know, you think that that would be a great thing. You'd want that information, you know. But I think what happens so many times is that we get so complacent in where we are. We get so kind of stuck, right? Where everything, everything is good. Everything is status quo. Everything's going okay, you know. There might be struggles. There might be high points. There might be low points. But, you know, all in all, it's just a flat line. You know, little little bumps in the road here and there. But but nothing really gets rattled. Nothing really gets shaken. Uh, we're all good to go. Right? And, and I think complacency really leads us to um, this point where we can't grow. Right? Where we can't expand our relationships. Where we can't understand those around us. You know, I, I think of marriages, I think of, you know, couples, whatever, whenever you get to that point of complacency, where there's kind of not any growth, you know, that's where a lot of, um, that's where a lot of couples wind up, you know, they say that seven year itch, right, where it's like you've kind of finally figured out things, and um, you become complacent with each other, and just traveling with the status quo, right, and that's whenever a lot of couples separate. You know, that's whenever a lot of people turn their backs and walk away from God, whenever they reach that point of complacency, where they're okay with the things that are going on, you know, and, and how do we eliminate that kind of, like, mundane, you know, complacency? Well, we have to further our understanding and our knowledge, right? It, it's something that we have to work on. Um, if, if you're feeling complacent, if you're feeling at that point of not having any growth, okay, you need to take the step out. You need to expand, you know, whatever you're doing. You know, if you feel like you're, you are, um, you're just all right with the Lord, everything's good, you know, um, now's the time to, to jump in and, and, uh, you know, dive in a little deeper, you know. If you don't have that warm, fuzzy feeling whenever you're talking about the Lord, I'd say, you know, maybe it's time to, to dig in a dig in a little deeper. Um, you know, one thing for me is doing these videos every day has really um, got me into a better habit of spending time with the Lord, you know, um, in preparing and praying through these scriptures and, and what I'm going to say. Um, I feel like I've grown so much and you know, not that I'm telling you you need to do the same kind of format, but take a moment to find that spiritual discipline where, you know, we are not complacent, where we are working on our growth, you know, um, so we don't fall out. So we don't fall away. You know, God will always be there for us. You know, even in the, even in the smooth road times, you know, he's there whenever we go over the bump, and he's there whenever we go down from the bump, you know, whenever we hit the pothole. But God will always be there, but we need to take the energy and the effort, right, to put into that relationship as well. It's not a one-sided, not a one-sided um, relationship. Yeah, you have to work on it. So, you know, I kind of reserved the last few verses um, of this of chapter seven here, uh, and didn't read them. Um, and you know, you can kind of figure where the story is going, right? So Stephen kind of lays it out there in verse 51 through 53, you know, telling them who they are. You know, he says, you are the ones who received the law and ordained by the angels yet you have not kept it. Obviously this angers, um, people that have him on trial. So they're like, you know, what should we do? Let's drag him outside and let's stone them. You know, so they kill him, And then it goes on to talk about Saul. Um, you know, and how Saul starts perse persecuting the church because of this event. Um, but that's a story for another time. So uh, as we as we spend some time in prayer this morning, um, our worship song is Promises, uh, Maverick City. You'll see the link below. Uh, and just think about how we can spend 
you know, more time? How, if, if we're becoming complacent, the things that we can do, you know, to get more Jesus time, you know, like I said, in a, in a relationship, in a marriage, or, you know, boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, if you're becoming complacent, what do you do? Find more opportunities to do things together. Find more opportunities to, you know, make more memories, to, you know, to just change things up. Okay. Maybe that's where we're at and what we need to do. So think about those kind of things as you are um, spending time worshiping this morning. So you'll find that link below. Once again, Promises, uh, Maverick City. Enjoy the song and enjoy the rest of your day.